Of course, there are uh, exceptions. I will not endanger. I will not endanger important sources of supply. I will not risk losing them by alienating them by being aggressive. And I would not. I would never direct aggression intentionally. I would, of course, direct aggression unintentionally, which happens to the Nazis all the time. But I would never be intentionally aggressive towards my source of secondary <coughs> supply. Uh, That's that, me. That would be Lydia. The source of secondary supply is the narcissist intimate partner or spouse or business partner, never mind, someone in his life whose main role is to regulate the narcissist's sense of self-worth by regulating narcissistic supply. And what do I mean by that? So there are periods of deficient supply and then the source of secondary supply steps in and she says, do you remember how brilliant you were at a lecture three years ago? Do you remember how everyone looked at you, looked up at you? Do you remember how you were on television? So she, what she does, she releases stored supply. She's like a battery. She's exactly like an accumulator, a battery. So she releases stored supply from her memories to the stream of supply that the narcissist enjoys or consumes. And so she regulates the supply. There are spikes in supply, spikes and valleys, obviously, and her job is to sort of smooth the stream, create a kind of streamlining of supply. So this is a source of secondary supply, and I would never risk that, because it's, it's a very important regulator. Uh, so these people are exempt, as long as there are sources of supply, of course. Actually, the until, until they function, and they record the glory, the glorified moments, that's when secondary. he was getting the supply. That's secondary. Yes. So but it is my job to mm. to focus on you, to see your reactions. Mm. When he will uh, need narcissistic supply, then I will fit him in. Do you remember this? Sorry, the Norwegian guy, the public. <laughs> so, just an example, okay? Um, so, but the minute they cease to be, or the minute I, I cease to perceive them as sources of supply, then they are fair, fair game. They are fair game and actually they're easy targets because throughout my interaction with them as sources of supply, I keep scanning them all the time and I keep accumulating information. Hence, hence the acridity and the perniciousness of the narcissist's devaluation of his nearest and dearest and closest because he, there is information asymmetry. The narcissist knows much more about his spouse, for example, than about a total stranger. So, uh, normally, when he would devalue his spouse, the devaluation would be a lot more nefarious, a lot more destructive mm. than with a total stranger yeah. because of this accumulated information. Narcissists all the time accumulate information. They scan all the time. They store. They are very computerized. They're very computer-like. Long time ago, I suggested, I mean, I, I compared narcissists to forms of artificial intelligence. I, for example, don't have emotions. Instead of emotions, I have something which I call emotional resonance tables. These are gigantic databases, but I mean gigantic, millions of items, databases, where I store how people react in various situations, under various circumstances, when certain words are spoken, when certain words are not spoken, reaction to silences, pregnant silences, and so on and so forth. And I store this in enormous rows and columns, kind of the cosmic Excel, you know? And it's a huge table. And then I go to a funeral, for example. And so I tap, tap into the database, and I use the search box, funeral, and I have all the instances of how people reacted in funerals. And I say, well, most of them cried, most of them feigned, uh, I mean, most of them had this facial expression, this body language, and said these words. And then I would mimic that. I would simply mimic that. And most narcissists are very good actors, and thespian skills are very well developed, so I mimic that very well. And I can pass. I usually pass. And people will often ask me, how can you be a narcissist? It's impossible. I mean, you're helping people. You're so oh, yeah. sensitive. You write poetry. The way I write poetry, which is very resonant poetry, I, I won many poetry prizes, including in the United States and so on. 
but my poetry is utterly computerized, utterly. I simply know that certain words, when put together, resonate in a highly specific way and generate a highly specific emotional response. And because my database is superior, well, until recently at least, until artificial intelligence took over, <laughs> but my database used to be superior, so I was able to produce very convincing poems. And that's known as the Turing test. I passed the Turing test. I'm actually a computer, but I convinced even you, most of you, I think, that I'm a human being, conveying I mean, my experiences and so on. But in all critical respects, I'm a computer, not a human being. I'm an organic computer, but I am a computer. I lack empathy, I lack emotions. I mean, what else? What else makes a human? <laughs> I'm not human in any sense of the word. <laughs>